The Road to Oz by L. Frank Baum. Chapter 18 The Emerald City. The others now came up, and the Tin Woodman greeted the Lion and the Tiger cordially. Button Bright yelled with fear when Dorothy first took his hand and led him toward the great beasts, but the girl insisted they were kind and good, and so the boy mustered up courage enough to pat their heads. After they had spoken to him gently, and he had looked into their intelligent eyes, his fear vanished entirely, and he was so delighted with the animals that he wanted to keep close to them, and stroke their soft fur every minute. As for the shaggy man, he might have been afraid if he had met the beasts alone, or in any other country. But so many were the marvels in the land of Oz that he was no longer easily surprised, and Dorothy's friendship for the lion and tiger was enough to assure him they were safe companions. Toto barked at the cowardly lion in joyous greeting, for he knew the beast of old and loved him and it was funny to see how gently the lion raised his huge paw to pat Toto's head. The little dog smelled of the tiger's nose, and the tiger politely shook paws with him, so they were quite likely to become firm friends. Tick-Tock and Billina knew the beasts well, so merely bade them good day, and asked after their healths, and inquired about the Princess Ozma. Now it was seen that the cowardly lion and the hungry tiger were drawing behind them a splendid golden chariot, to which they were harnessed by golden cords. The body of the chariot was decorated on the outside with designs in clusters of sparkling emeralds, while inside it was lined with a green and gold satin, and the cushions of the seats were of green plush, embroidered in gold with a crown, underneath which was a monogram. "'Why, it's Ozma's own royal chariot!' exclaimed Dorothy. "'Yes,' said the cowardly lion. "'Ozma sent us to meet you here, "'for she feared you would be weary with your long walk, "'and she wished you to enter the city "'in a style becoming your exalted rank.' "'What?' cried Polly, "'looking at Dorothy curiously. "'Do you belong to the nobility?' "'Just in Oz I do,' said the child. "'Cause Ozma made me a princess, you know. "'But when I'm home in Kansas, I'm only a country girl, "'and have to help with the churning and wipe the dishes "'while Aunt Em washes them. "'Do you have to help wash dishes on the rainbow, Polly?' "'No, dear,' answered Polychrome, smiling. "'Well, I don't have to work any in Oz, either,' said Dorothy. "'It's kind of fun to be a princess once in a while, don't you think so?' "'Dorothy and Polychrome and Button Bright are all to ride in the chariot,' said the lion. "'So get in, my dears, and be careful not to mar the gold, or put your dusty feet on the embroidery.' Button Bright was delighted to ride behind such a superb team, and he told Dorothy it made him feel like an actor in a circus. As the strides of the animals brought them nearer to the Emerald City, everyone bowed respectfully to the children, as well as to the tin woodman, Tick-Tock, and the shaggy man, who were following behind. The yellow hen had perched upon the back of the chariot, where she could tell Dorothy more about her wonderful chickens as they rode. And so the grand chariot came finally to the high wall surrounding the city, and paused before the magnificent jewel-studded gates. These were opened by a cheerful-looking little man, who wore green spectacles over his eyes. Dorothy introduced him to her friends as the Guardian of the Gates, and they noticed a big bunch of keys suspended on the golden chain that hung around his neck. The chariot passed through the outer gates into a fine arched chamber built in the thick wall, and through the inner gates into the streets of the Emerald City. Polychrome exclaimed in rapture at the wondrous beauty that met her eyes on every side, as they rode through this stately and imposing city, the equal of which has never been discovered, even in fairyland. Button Bright could only say, My! So amazing was the sight, 
but his eyes were wide open, and he tried to look in every direction at the same time, so as not to miss anything. The shaggy man was fairly astounded at what he saw, for the graceful and handsome buildings were covered with plates of gold, and set with emeralds so splendid and valuable that in any other part of the world any one of them would have been worth a fortune to its owner. The sidewalks were superb marble slabs, polished as smooth as glass, and the curbs that separated the walks from the broad street were also set thick with clustered emeralds. There were many people on these walks, men, women, and children, all dressed in handsome garments of silk or satin or velvet, with beautiful jewels. Better even than this, all seemed happy and contented, for their faces were smiling and free from care, and music and laughter might be heard on every side. "'Don't they work at all?' asked the shaggy man. "'To be sure they work,' replied the tin woodman. "'This fair city could not be built or cared for without labor, nor could the fruit and vegetables and other food be provided for the inhabitants to eat. But no one works more than half his time, and the people of Oz enjoy their labors as much as they do their play. "'It's wonderful,' declared the shaggy man. "'I do hope Ozma will let me live here.' The chariot, winding through many charming streets, paused before a building so vast and noble and elegant that even Button-Bright guessed at once that it was the royal palace. Its gardens and ample grounds were surrounded by a separate wall, not so high or thick as the wall around the city, but more daintily designed, and built all of green marble. The gates flew open as the chariot appeared before them, and the cowardly lion and hungry tiger trotted up a jeweled driveway to the front door of the palace, and stopped short. "'Here we are,' said Dorothy gaily, and helped Button-Bright from the chariot. Polychrome leaped out lightly after them, and they were greeted by a crowd of gorgeously dressed servants, who bowed low as the visitors mounted the marble steps. At their head was a pretty little maid, with dark hair and eyes, dressed all in green, embroidered with silver. Dorothy ran up to her with evident pleasure, and exclaimed, "'Oh, Jelia Jam! I'm so glad to see you again. Where's Ozma?' "'In her room, Your Highness,' replied the little maid demurely, for this was Ozma's favorite attendant. "'She wishes you to come to her as soon as you have rested and changed your dress, Princess Dorothy.' and you and your friends are to dine with her this evening. "'When is her birthday, Jelia? asked the girl. "'Day after tomorrow, Your Highness.' "'And where's the scarecrow?' "'He's gone into the munchkin country to get some fresh straw to stuff himself with, in honor of Ozma's celebration,' replied the maid. "'He returns to the Emerald City tomorrow,' he said." By this time Tick-Tock, the Tin Woodman, and the Shaggy Man had arrived, and the chariot had gone around to the back of the palace, Billina going with the Lion and Tiger to see her chickens after her absence from them. But Toto stayed close beside Dorothy. "'Come in, please,' said Jelia Jam. "'It shall be our pleasant duty to escort all of you to the rooms prepared for your use.' The shaggy man hesitated. Dorothy had never known him to be ashamed of his shaggy looks before, but now that he was surrounded by so much magnificence and splendor, the shaggy man felt sadly out of place. Dorothy assured him that all her friends were welcome at Ozma's palace, so he carefully dusted his shaggy shoes with his shaggy handkerchief, and entered the grand hall after the others. Tick-Tock lived at the royal palace, and the tin woodman always had the same room whenever he visited Ozma, so these two went at once to remove the dust of the journey from their shining bodies. 
Dorothy also had a pretty suite of rooms which she always occupied when in the Emerald City, but several servants walked ahead politely to show the way, although she was quite sure she could find the rooms herself. She took Button Bright with her, because he seemed too small to be left alone in such a big palace, but Jelia Jam herself ushered the beautiful daughter of the rainbow to her apartments, because it was easy to see that Polychrome was used to splendid palaces, and was therefore entitled to special attention. End of chapter 18